Shavan, Mark Okran och Pongwich, eh. Klinger hol, vitchen moch, ta, ta, chiu. I started work on the Klingon language because I was hired to do it. The people in Hollywood working on the movie, Star Trek III, are the ones who came up with the idea that there should be such a thing as the Klingon language. This was mainly Harv Bennett, who was the executive producer and writer for Star Trek III. Uh, so in talking to him, we decided the best approach to the language would be to make it be a, a real language, to make it grammatically uh, normal, <laughs> sort of. Uh, and to make it sound like a genuine language, and to make it sound like a genuine language, it had to be real. So that's what we set about to do. So it was the idea of Hollywood, not, not mine. When I was working on the Klingon language, when I was working on the films uh, with the Klingon language, I was wondering all the time, is there going to be one word that people will recognize as Klingon, even if they don't know the language otherwise, or even if they're not quite sure what Klingons are all about. They'll still hear it and know that that's Klingon. And it turns out there is such a word. So that's the word I would choose. The word is Khatla, which means success. Well, all the languages, came about as a result of the producer or the writer or somebody asking for it. You know, I didn't go to them and say, hey, you need a language or something like that. Uh, some of them were for characters that existed already, like Kelpian in Star Trek, in Star Trek Discovery in particular. Um, sometimes we would work together on creating the language and sort of those people who speak it. But for the movies and TV, it's always, it's always comes from the writer and the producer. Believe it or not, I'll only fess up to one, which is English, is specifically North American English. Um, as a linguist, you study about a lot of languages. And I studied about a lot, and I learned to speak some somewhat. But in terms of being absolutely fluent, that's English. And I even put Klingon in the mix, because in working on Klingon, it was for the movie, make the movie, movie's done, goodbye, on to the next project. So I never, uh, as, as I was doing it, never engaged in conversation with anybody. Of course, in the early days, there was no one to engage in conversation with, which is not, not, no longer true. The Atlantean language came about because they needed a language for this film, Atlantis, The Lost Empire. The Atlantean people speak their own language, and they hired me to do that, which is great. And I had a lot of discussions with the producer and the directors and the writers about what this language should be all about. And one of the things about it is that it's characterized in the film as a very, very old language or language from which other languages arose or something like that. Whether that's true or not doesn't make any difference. The point is I had to make a language that fit that theory. So unlike Klingon, I made the language have features that are as common as possible, as things that are found very frequently in languages of the world. And for vocabulary, if I was able to, I used old, old dictionaries of ancient languages and things like that to see if I could pull any words because they were this Atlantic language was supposed to be connected to everything. So I want to make a language that maybe uh, could be analyzed that way. Uh, for the writing system, I remember we had a meeting about writing systems one day at, at Disney. There was a big room, the walls were lined with examples of writing systems from all over the world. Uh, and they're looking at it, of course, from an art point of view. And I'm looking at them from a language point of view, which is not the same thing. So they were looking at what it might look like in the film and things like that, and I was explaining how some of them work. And I was explaining there's ways to write that are not alphabets. There's you know, d directions of writing that's not left to right, and so on. And we talked about various things. Uh, one idea they did take from me is in ancient, ancient writings in some places, where they carved in stone and stuff. They would say, start in the upper left-hand corner, go across, get to the end, drop down, come back, drop down, go back again, back and forth and back. They thought that was just terrific. So Atlantean is written in that way. I lobbied for this language, uh, for the written language to not to be an alphabet, to be some other kind of system, because I thought that would be more interesting. But it is an alphabet. Uh, an artist at, at Disney made it up. I had nothing to do with that. 
They even made up in Atlantean letters. You don't need to write Atlantean, but you do need to write English. Um, so at first I was a little bit disappointed because, ah, oh, let's make it something else. But now that I think I said, no, that was a good idea because now you can use Atlantean letters to write pretty much anything, and that's a lot more fun. When I came here, I had to make up a word for Lithuania because there was no official Klingon way to say that just yet. But there is now, and it's Lietukva. Hop Lietukva, Lop Klimrok, Lutevjaj.